Uh, good morning. Good, good morning. Or I should I say ni hao? Thank you for coming. Uh, I'm very glad to be here in the 10th Rubicon of China. Uh, I attended uh, la past several conferences, but uh, I'm very honored to be invited to the, uh, for the keynote speaker in the 10th Rubicon of China. Uh, I visited many uh, Ruby conferences all over the world, uh, Japan, United States, Europe, uh, India, uh, Singapore, and uh, uh, China as well. And uh, each region has different culture, uh, different uh, characters of the region, but uh, uh, the developers attending the conferences are uh, very similar. Uh, they love technologies, they love computers, they love programming, and uh, they love uh, Ruby, <laughs> because Ruby conference. <laughs> and, and uh, you know, we, are, we were born in different places, in different culture, but uh, we are in the same community, uh, even though we are different citizenship or anything. So the, this is a Ruby conference. So the, I'm going to talk about Ruby. And then Ruby is good. You agree with it, right? <laughs> yeah, Ruby is good because it's productive and it's flexible and it's fun to use. But at the same time, some people claim uh, Ruby is bad. And uh, yet, in some cases, you know, Ruby is not perfect. So that some, make, uh, some people don't like Ruby, and some aspects of Ruby. And uh, some even claim that Ruby is dead. Or Ruby is less popular in the uh, popularity ranking like a TOB index. Uh, uh, it's, the Ruby is 11th out of the 150 languages. Uh, it's not really bad. It's even higher than Swift. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, the, another uh, popularity ranking of the programming language is Redmonk Index. It's 8th out of 20 languages. It's, it's great. <laughs> And uh, Ruby is good enough, and uh, many big services, good big sites use Ruby. For example, uh, our beloved GitHub is implemented in Ruby. Airbnb is implemented in Ruby. Instacart, Cookpad, all of them are implemented in Ruby. So that uh, when you, when we implement, uh, provide the web services, so that it's quite a small chance to be, get bigger than the, those sites. So that performance-wise, so that we have no problem if we, uh, yeah, if we act smartly. So it reads fast enough for most of the cases. And uh, in some cases, you, you might reach the limit, but I think it's okay. So the, let me tell you about the Twitter story. Uh, Twitter was in, the service Twitter was started in uh, 2007, I guess. And uh, at the beginning, it was implemented at Ruby on Rails. But, uh, you know, the Twitter system is not really uh, suitable for the crowd application like Ruby does. So that uh, as services grow, the, they reach the limit of the performance. So they started moving out of Ruby and moved to the Scala in 2000, I don't know, 2010 or something. But uh, think about that. Beginning of the Twitter, no one believed Twitter succeeded. Uh, at the moment, the, the founder of the Twitter went to the, the 
venture capitalist investors and uh, explained about ex about their services okay we are going to provide a microblog service which every article must be less than 140 characters so it sounded silly idea you know when you uh you know sub the make a blog in the say blogger or the wordpress or anything you can write as many as you want but limiting those uh, articles in what, less than 140 characters is quite quite small and silly and sounds like a crazy idea and then uh, very few people invested into the twitter but uh, it turned out the twitter was fun and uh, everyone started using twitter then so that the twitter succeeded they got uh, millions of uh, users and then they suffered the traffic of, and the performance of the, uh, and the Twitter service application. And then they tried many things. They added retreat, they added DM, they, they added uh, some the message, uh, referring message or the searching, many things. But uh, they eventually defined what Twitter was. So that uh, then everyone loved Twitter. They turned out, they found, the people found the Twitter, what Twitter was, and uh, they loved the Twitter. But uh, uh, early stage of Twitter, they have to seek the, what their service should be. And then uh, at that moment, the providing service in Ruby is quite useful and convenient for them because Ruby is productive and Ruby is flexible. After they defined what Twitter was, so that uh, they got money, they got invested, so that uh, they have m even, uh, enough money to re-implement their services in the better architecture. Remember, Twitter was implemented in Ruby 1.8, and some, for some reason, they, regist, they refused to migrate their service into Ruby 1.9 and later. So the, this is my guess, but uh, if they try to re-implement their services in the newer Ruby, for example, Ruby 2.0, 2.2+, 2, 2 plus, and uh, they, if they re-implemented the, the streaming-based services like uh, the Twitter Kafka, which is the, the, their streaming uh, messaging implementation in Scala, but uh, if they imp re implement their s streaming service in Ruby, I think the performance is good enough, but uh, you know, the developers love new things, so, that I, so they try to use Scala, but that's okay. And then in that sense, so that when you are going to start your service, so that at the mo at the beginning, so that no one knows what your service should be, so you have to try and errors retry, so that in that phase, the being implemented in Ruby is very uh, important. So the Ruby is getting uh, faster each year. So the the limit is moving. So the Twitter faced a limit in very early stage. So for several years later, they started services. But uh, now Ruby uh, two six right now is far far faster in than Ruby one point three. Uh, I mean one point eight. So the, each year Ruby two improved the performance like this. So the uh, Ruby 2 .3, 2 .4, 2 .4, 2 2.3, 2.4, 2.4, 1.1, 2.5, 2.6, and I, the performance is getting slightly better each year. So that uh, in average, the in some some Ruby, I mean the 
this is Ruby benchmark, uh, Ruby web benchmark, and then it is uh, in five percent improvement each year in average. So that that's kind of great. So the, we are we are improving. So the yeah, so the, the recent you know in popularity of Ruby is kind of like a pipe cycle. You know, uh, when technology started, so that everyone got into the, the, the new technology, so that, and then leads to the peak of inflated expectation. So that, you know, so for example, today, everyone loves AI and the machine learning. And then they jumped into the last machine learning, but, uh, you know, machine, Machine per learning and AI is not panacea. They, it, they don't solve all problems. So the, they, can, uh, they can improve some, some problems, but uh, not all. <coughs> so some people started to you know, disappoint. So then the popularity that goes down into the top trough of disillusionment. So that once they have the illusion of the, okay, AI is everything, Ruby is great. And then they turned out to, to realize the reality. <clears throat> but the usefulness of the technology is stable, so that they gradually refine, rediscover the usefulness of the tool or technology, and it's going to the slope of en enlightenment. Then we finally reach the plateau of the productivity. The same thing happens in every technology. So that in, say, 2008 to 10, we were at the peak of inflated expectation so that everyone loved Ruby. Everyone used Ruby for many things. But uh, in fact, Rails is not a panacea. So Rails is not suitable for the, some cases. So that, anyway, they, you know, dis disappointed in Ruby, and that they claim that, okay, I love new language, new technology, so that Ruby is dead, I'm going to the next technology or something like that. But uh, we, t we can say uh, Ruby is great. Let's face it. Uh, Ruby is not perfect. We have some issues, and uh, we have performance issues. Uh, we cannot handle the multi-core computers, and uh, we uh, some we have some issues in the bigger team and the bigger projects. But uh, we are working on it, so that to make Ruby better. So, uh, so let's talk about the future of the language. And performance is always a problem, so that we have to uh, improve the performance. That I started Ruby in 2000, uh, I mean, that 1993. 1993, back then, we have only one CPU per computer, so that every computer has only one core. But uh, these days, even the laptop has the, the multi cores. And uh, our server machines have the many, many cores, like uh, 32 cores, 64 cores. So that we have to use these cores. And then uh, as, the, as the project grows, as service grows, so the team working on the project will grow. Maybe we started in a team of six, then the, the team will gradually grow to 100. So that if the team grows, so we have some kind of communication problem. So that, uh, so the the you know more strict language like uh, you know JavaScript, uh, I mean the Java or TypeScript is uh, preferred because of the you know you don't have to communicate about the you know the type of the type of the API. We just compile error, uh, reports the er errors. And uh, the software grows. And uh, we, when we maintain the millions of lines of code, 
the, the flexibility of Ruby uh, sometimes hinders us. But the uh, open source community cannot stop. Uh, we have to keep improvement because of the, the we, we cannot, uh, we don't have membership of the open source communities. So okay, consider you are the member of the Ruby community, broader Ruby community, but uh, you, you, you don't pay me to enter into the community, right? <laughs> You didn't pay me. So there's no initiation, no admission fees, so that you can just get in to use Ruby. And, uh, you are f and uh, uh, that means that you are free to leave from the community. Okay, from now on, I'm going to move to the say, Python, JavaScript, whatever new technology. So that open to sustain open source community, we have to attract people. So if we stop improving the software, so that, you know, people get bored, and uh, yeah, nothing fun happens in Ruby anymore, so that I'm going to leave or something like that. So that we keep improvement. So that in Ruby 2, we improved the performance in the past, so that we, are going to make improvement even further in Ruby 3. The Ruby 3 is a far future. And uh, I'm going to release Ruby 3 in late next year, 2020, uh, if everything happens, uh, if everything goes well. Uh, so how can we improve in, in the future Ruby? Uh, one thing is performance. Uh, and the second one is concurrency. The third one is static analysis. Uh, let me talk about the static analysis first. Uh, these days, in 2010s, so the static typing language is pretty popular. So it, for example, the Go is static typed, Rust is static typed, Swift is static typed, and uh, for JavaScript camp, from JavaScript camp, they are gradually migrating the TypeScript, which is a static type JavaScript. And uh, that's the reason, because as the project grows, the test becomes a burden, you know, the, especially the type testing, okay? This, this argument should be integer, this argument should be string, or something like that. So that I, it's it's kind of the it's kind of the burden, and then test increases the size, and the test execution takes more time, and then the longer test uh, irritates me because I, I have to wait for the computer. So that I am the master of the computer; they are slaves. <laughs> and then, but uh, when I waited for the, the my my slaves to to work, so that I, I just forced to wait. I, I, I don't like that. But uh, tests are not dry. Dry means they don't repeat yourself. So that to, to confess, I don't like tests. <laughs> you know, because it's redundant. So that, but uh, our, the human being have not invented to ensure the correctness of the software besides tests. So I, we do write tests anyway, but, uh, but we want to be more productive, so we want to reduce the amount of tests, and then we want to automate the tests. And then other languages are try to uh, use static typing to reduce the tests. For example, the PHP 7 introduced the type hinting. And uh, Python 3 introduced a type annotation. And the JavaScript introduced the TypeScript. All of them are somewhat static typed. So what should we do? Ruby community do. Uh, adding type annotation, like PHP or Python. 
because they are doing it? No. <laughs> I hate type annotations because it's not dry. It's redundant. Our Ruby programs run with a type annotation, type declaration, uh, because we don't have type annotation in the language. That, but it works. So that, that means that adding type annotation is redundant. So, the, so we want other type hinting, type declaration, type annotation, because it's needed. So I have a plan, the plan for retrieve. Uh, we are going to provide a static type checking components to the Ruby 3, several components. The first one is the type definition syntax, which is in the separated file. Uh, then we are going to provide the type definition information for libraries and gems. And, uh, and we are going to provide a, a tool that, that, that named the type profiler. Then the last one is the static type checker. So let me explain about the, them one by one. The type definition syntax is the, the separated, somewhat a declarative language of, to describe the type of the Ruby programs. The Sotero Matsumoto, uh, who have accidentally shares family name, but well, the Matsumoto is a very common family name in, in Japan, and uh, who is working on this uh, the type signature syntax. <clears throat> this is kind of a compromise, but uh, we are going to have the separated files to describe types, to describe that argument types, return value types, and the class and the module with the generic types, and even interfaces. Goes like this, the class foo has a method named def with that returns no, no value, and uh, it, has, it also has a method named 2s, which returns strings. And uh, it optionally accepts uh, integer arguments and uh, returns strings as well. This is the, uh, the type description. And uh, we are going to provide a tool to process those RBS files. The pro we can find the pro, ah, uh, I'm sorry, I made a mistake. I uh, replace Sotero with Ruby because we, uh, we migrated uh, this, this prototype to the Ruby uh, re repository. So the github.com Ruby slash Ruby signature. So that you can, you can check the prototype of the tool. And then by using this syntax, we are going to provide a type definition for libraries, standard libraries and gems. Then, so the, the two names, the type profiler can, can come, come in. Uh, the Yusuke Endo, who is the full-time Ruby committer uh, hired by the, the company named Cookpad, uh, he, who, is working on the, who is working on this type profiler. This is the key component of the static analysis. The type profiler used the technique, used the abstract interpretation, AI in short. And uh, when you see when you see that this kind of the simpler simple Ruby programs, the foo method takes a argument and then a returns the value a plus two, and then calls the method foo with the value fifteen. So the the pipe profiler scans this program, and then look at the 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 invoke. Call, call of the method foo with the argument integer. Then the integer, a is the integer, as a result, a is the integer value, and the integer plus two, so integer, the method, integer has method plus, so it's okay, but uh, if integer does not have some method, we can find this, this error. <clears throat> so the type profiler uh, plays many roles. So the type profiler can collect uh, the type information from the existing Ruby programs like this. And uh, the type profiler can detect the type conflict of type information like 
the the like a line two, and then by using those those collected information, the type profiler can generate the Ruby uh, Ruby type signature. So the type profiler can work as a level one static type checker, and then uh, and it can be used as the the RBS generator for your programs. And then if you don't want uh, if you need more information uh, for your type, uh, your, your software, so you can refine generate the RBS files. Because uh, type profiler cannot uh, understand everything. For example, a type profiler tends to understand array as a uniform array, so that uh, you have the two array, uh, array of the three elements, the first one is symbol, the second one is string, the third one is uh, third one is integer. So the type profile I guess is uh, argument as a, you know, you, we have many types in a, okay, the symbol and strings and integer. So that this, this argument, uh, this array has element of any or object. But uh, you might use ar arrays as tuples so the, the first argument is always a symbol. The second, second element is always uh, strings. The third element is always an integer. So that you can uh, refine the uh, uh, Ruby signature by, your, by, by yourself to tell the software, okay, the first element is symbol, the second element is uh, strings, and the third element is integer, or something like that. Uh, and uh, we may also provide a YAR to RBS converter, so that you write a YAR document in the type, type information, so they, that YAR converter to generate the RBS file. Okay, this is type profiler. Okay, the last element is the static type checkers. We have two prototypes. The company named Stripe uh, implemented the, the type checker named Sobet. And then uh, Sotaro Matsumoto, who is working on the Ruby signature uh, browser, is uh, working on the, the static type, type checker named Street, uh, Steep. Uh, those two will use the RBS file type information. Actually, at the, at the moment, Sobet does not use the RBS file yet, but they are working on it. Uh, because the, the team of Solve and then Steep and the type profilers so is working together to provide a better uh, static typing in Ruby 3. The, those static type checker has a different characteristic. And then Solve, you can find Solve in at this, this URL. And then Solve is implemented in C++ and then it's it's quite fast, the almost real time. And then the Sobe works mostly nominal. And uh, it's currently it's supposed to its own the type annotation DSL, but uh, it's gradually moving to the, the Ruby signature. The, the RBS support is coming. Uh, Steep is Sotalo's uh, project. It's written in Ruby and it uses the structural typing. And uh, since it's written in Ruby, so the step is more flexible and it's good for the experiments. But, uh, I believe we have the, some kind of the healthy uh, competition. So the, we are, that's what we are going to provide in Ruby 3 static type analysis. So that what will happen with this? Your ordinary Ruby programs will be statically type checked so that if you provide integer to the method which accepts strings, you will get the error at the compile time. And uh, without type annotation in, in Ruby, your Ruby program, you don't have to write any type annotation in your Ruby program uh, because we are not going to provide the type annotation syntax in Ruby language. But uh, you, you might need to generate the Ruby signature files to, to provide the type information. And uh, you may need to refine type definition files so you will have the better checking. Uh, 
as I said, this is kind of a compromise because our compiler or the type inference technology enhanced in the future, we, we are doing better jobs so that we, are, we might not need to the, need the type this definition files no more. So that, that's the reason we separated the, in the, sep, uh, the different files because once we added the uh, type annotation to the syntax, the people write, start writing Ruby program with type annotation, so that in the future, there's, we cannot remove them even after we, we have technology to, to infer the your type of your, your programs without any type annotation. So that wouldn't be that be cool, so that you don't have to write types, but you have static type check. And uh, you will have the, you will have the, you know, the ease of programming, the safety of your programming. And uh, your program will even more productive uh, after your project grows, after your team grows. Uh, we are working on it, and the uh, result is promising. Yeah, at least from my point of view. Okay, performance. Uh, no language can be fast enough. The people complains. I understand. Uh, as I told you before, we'll be to improve the performance like this. But then we are going to improve even further in Ruby 3. We need more performance. We need to provide better service. Uh, we need to address the anxiety of the perform uh, performance of managers and executives. Uh, we need to address bottlenecks. So the, in Ruby programs, we see many bottlenecks for the memory bottlenecks, CPU bottlenecks, IO bottlenecks. The, for most of the cases, uh, memory is the first bottleneck. That's why we are working on garbage collectors. Uh, in the past, we have improved a lot. So that we introduced the generation garbage collector in Ruby 2.1, which reduced the amount of uh, time spent in the garbage collector. So the Ruby 2.2, introduced the incremental garbage collector, which reduced the, the maximum pause time because it garbage collection done in incrementary. And then Ruby 2.6, we introduced a transient heap, which reduced the amount of memory allocated so that uh, we can be more cache savvy. And then Ruby 2.7, we are going to uh, introduce the object compaction which reduced the, the total amount of memory used in, in the, using the Ruby program. So the, the, by using those technologies, so the Ruby uh, memory bottlenecks is uh, re relaxed so much. Uh, in the past, so some people use the, the technique named the OOBGC, which, is, uh, which stands for the out of band GC. So that, for example, the, in the past, uh, the, the services like GitHub uh, calls the garbage collector explicitly after the, the processing the request because of the, uh, if we hit the garbage collector in the middle of the request processing, so that the services stop is for you know, the 500 millisecond or even a second. So that, that's not good. So that they run garbage collector explicitly after, pro, after the, in the middle of the requests. Uh, in between the requests, I mean. Uh, but uh, since we introduced the generation garbage collector and the incremental garbage collector, so the, the, the GitHub and the other services do not require OOBGC any longer, so that they removed OOGC uh, code. So the, that's, that's one uh, example of the, the memory improvement in the past. <coughs> to resolve the CPU bottleneck, 
we are going to introduce uh, the JIT compiler, a uh, just-in-time compiler. So the, the code name is MJIT. The, actually, we already released it in the MJIT in Ruby 2.6, which released in last December. So the, for in C, CPU intensive task, the, the JIT, JIT compiler improved the performance a lot. Uh, our benchmark is something named OptoCarrot, which is the Nintendo Famicom emulator. And uh, the, uh, up in benchmark mode, the OptoCarrot runs the uh, Famicom games in as fast as possible it, without any input and interaction. And then uh, Ruby 2.6 runs 2.8 times faster than Ruby 2.0. It's, it's kind of great. And uh, Ruby 2.7 uh, runs even faster. So the, it's, it's great for C, uh, C, CPU bottlenecks. But uh, unfortunately, for Rails apps, MG runs slower. <laughs> uh, because of the because some reasons, okay. The, the biggest reason is that for most of the Rails applications, so that the uh, CPU is not a bottleneck. So the bottleneck is memory and I/O, and mostly I/O. So that the improving the CPU bottlenecks does not solve any problem, and then the cost of the compiling is uh, matters more. So that the but uh, we are still working on it. The the re the latest MZ, which is, is in the, the Git master, is runs a Rails application as fast as without it. I mean, that it does not make it slower, not, not faster than it either. <laughs> but uh, we are improving. So now, if you're working on the, some kind of the CPU bottleneck task, so the MZ works well for you. Uh, the memory. So the ah, okay, the Rails application has a memory bottlenecks, and uh, and uh, uh, the Rails is a huge applica uh, application framework. So that we they have so many methods to compile. So that the, co the cost of compilation uh, we cannot ignore, and uh, most of the time we have uh, I/O bottlenecks. And uh, we are also working on the lighter compilation. The the Vladimir Makarov, we call him B Vlad. Uh, he's he's a he's just a smart guy, and uh, he worked for Red Hat, and uh, he uh, for day job he works works for the GCC optimization, so that you know he he improves the GCC compiler for money, <laughs> and. Uh, uh, he implemented uh, the JIT compiler for Ruby as a hobby. <laughs> and uh, he, he started a new project named Mio, which is the lightweight JIT. So the, in the future, I don't think it's, it's available before Ruby 3, but then probably Ruby 3.1 or 3.2. And uh, we will going to provide a three-tire JIT, which has the uh, normal virtual machine like uh, current uh, MRuby does. I mean, current C Ruby does, and a lighter JIT compiler, uh, which is, and then the, and the MZ, which is highly optimized JIT compiler. Uh, JIT may, be not, may not be used for, for web applications, but uh, JIT would be used for, for research computing and number crunching or machine learning or something like that. So that, Okay, we have the, right now, p the machine learning people and AI people use Python, but uh, after uh, GT's performance, they might want to use Ruby for, for the, its performance. Maybe. Uh, the other way to improve a performance is concurrency. Uh, actually, concurrency is hard. Uh, I regret adding threads to the language. Because Reddit is hard to use correctly and hard to use efficiently, hard to debug. Okay, let me say excuse. Uh, I introduced uh, threads to the Ruby in 
20, more than 20 years ago. So back then, we don't have to worry about the parallelism. Every computer has one CPU, so that there's no parallelism. But uh, these days, we have the, you know, multi-cores. We have true parallelism. And, uh, in, in that state, the, no, the concurrency pro concurrent programming is far more, more, far more difficult. So, that, so I think we need better abstraction for concurrency. So that we are going to work on the guilds and the old fibers. Uh, the guilds for the CPU bottlenecks and the old fiber is for IO bottlenecks, which is easy to use, easy to debug, easy to perform. Uh, I know Go or Elixir use single entry. You know, Go has good routine, Elixir has processes, but uh, yeah, it's kind of compromised because uh, Ruby is not really a concurrent programming language from its day one, so that it has, uh, you know, the history, and uh, it has many, uh, you know, legacy or something like that, so that we have to compromise to have two entities instead of one. Uh, I admit uh, we need better names. Uh, I, I don't like the name guilds, so the, the Ruby community is uh, discussing about the new names, and uh, we have some kind of the naming problem here. And uh, yeah, we also going to, uh, we are also discussing about the name of the auto fibers, so that, yeah, if you have good names, uh, please tell me. Your opinion is welcome. Uh, those imp some improvements are inspired by the functional programming languages, static typing and the concurrency models. And uh, we, are, we are going to add these kind of the, the improvement inspired by the functional programming language. One of them is a numbered block parameters from Scala, Clojure, Groovy. So those languages have the, the default name for the block argument. So we are going to introduce something like this. Okay, uh, let me tell you about the, the story. Okay, currently, this un underscore one is at one in, in the current source. But uh, uh, this week, <laughs> we, made, we made a, a conclusion to rename it to that underscore one. So that, okay, this is the, the, the world first time to give, <laughs> give a presentation about this, this name change. Uh, other, we have other options like uh, Groovy and Kotlin use it, and uh, current C Ruby use at signs, and uh, yeah, Clojure use the pattern sign. Uh, Elixir use at ampersand. But uh, yeah, we are, we are going to uh, underscore one, a la Scala. Okay, we are going to add a pattern matching as well. It's not a regular expression pattern matching, but uh, the functional programming pattern matching. For example, they, after Ruby 2.7, we can write something like this. Uh, case in name Alice, children, name both age, age. Like something like this. Uh, if you find the entity named Alice, whose children named Bob, you can retrieve the age of the, her son, print age. Yeah, this is quite straightforward. And uh, yeah, current Ruby, we, you have to write like this. The person's, with person's name is Alice, and uh, the children's, only one, ch she has only one children, and the uh, first children, has name is Bob, and then we keep the name of uh, age of her, her son, Bob, or something like that. Okay, compared to this program, uh, this is much simpler and understandable. We are going to introduce this kind of the pattern matching in the language. Uh, chaining operator. Uh, it, the language like f -sharp and Elixir are something like this. 
instead of this. Actually, the Python operator in F# -sharp and the ML language is the function like this. Okay, this means that uh, the Python operator are the primary argument at the last of the function call. Uh, the pipeline operator in Elixir is a macro which are the primary arguments as the first argument of the function call. So the, the concept of the pipeline operator is the other primary argument to the call. And so the pipeline operator in Ruby is the other primary argument to the call. That means the other primary argument as the receiver. So, goes like this. So in Ruby, we don't really need the, uh, the pipeline operator because we have the dot operator. But uh, adding pipeline operator like this, we have to uh, remove the parentheses. <laughs> so this is the alternative syntax. So, yeah. <laughs> I know this is controversial. Ah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, this is the alternative syntax of dots and a different operator. But uh, Ruby has a history of the different operator precedents, like blocks has two, two appearance, and do end, and uh, the braces. And uh, it provides a rest parenthesis. But uh, after after long, long discussion, I gave up. <laughs> so that we are not going to the other pipeline operator to Ruby 3. Now that it's it's before Ruby 3 to 2.7 release, I had to re experiment. At least we get some ideas from the discussions. For example, uh, we are going to allow the comments in method chains like this. Uh, this is illegal before two to six because of the at the at the comment the method chain is is broken. But uh, we really really understand that the requ requ requirement demands for these comments in the method chains. So the, yeah, the, the discussion itself is valuable. In addition, so the, we are working on the right assignment. So that if you want to the assign the, the method, method chains, we have to go back to the top and assign to the variable at the very beginning of the method chain. But uh, it's against the, uh, our eye movement from top to bottom and left to right. So that we are, we are going to add uh, some kind of the, the right assignment. So you have to write assignment at the very bottom of the statement of our method chain. Yeah. Anyway, uh, anyway, we are trying many things. Some, some are introduced to the language. Some are, some are just, just throw away. So the, we try many things. We experiment many things. We implement many things. If either uh, implementation and uh, in the language design because we need to survive so that if we stop, people leave from the Ruby community. Ruby community need to attract people. We have to provide the value to the community. We have to uh, survive to provide benefit to our users. Uh, Okay, you you can uh, provide your services by Ruby on Rails quickly and uh, to to win their competition, or I mean, 
you can be more productive using Ruby and Rails or whatever. So, and uh, this is pretty much important. Uh, Ruby is here, open source software is here to provide you benefit. And uh, in, very important, important for us so that to sustain our lives. People make money out of Ruby, the implementing web services in Ruby, and uh, some company become uh, sponsors for us, full-time committers, so that our, our lives are very, very uh, de de depends on the existence of, of the Ruby community. And uh, that means that we will keep moving forward to sustain our lives, to provide the benefit to, the, to the, our users. And, uh, and very importantly, the we does not mean the core committers, very limited people, the people who develop, uh, implement the core Ruby. But uh, we means you, us, so that people who implement Ruby, people who design Ruby, who, uh, people who use Ruby, people who sell Ruby books, and the people who buy Ruby books, us, broader us. And the uh, whole purpose of us, Ruby community, is to make you and us happy and uh, to make the world a better place. So that this is very important uh, goal for the Ruby community, the broader Ruby community. Let's work together. Uh, despite the citizenship, despite the rationality, and despite, uh, this, despite you know, the difference. So that we use Ruby, we love Ruby, we work together. Thank you. Thank you, Max. Uh, do you know that Max has just released a new book? Wow, this body has, bu has bought your books. Oh, thank you. <laughs>然后呢一会儿我们会在外面由那个由图灵出版社啊当然这次要特别感谢图灵出版社还有乐心老师呃能够促成这次麦斯的中国行然后我们一会儿会在外面组织一个签售会但是呢考虑到大多很多人都没有
But uh, in, on, in, but uh, at the at the same time, you know, we have basically rails. So the one one choice. So that the but uh, that means that we have less uh, suffer to to migrate to the new new framework or something like that. So that uh, actually at least in the web domain, so the technology wise we have the best choice. But uh, uh, we have the smooth migration and uh, the smooth technology. But uh, uh, so as a core commu uh, community, so that we have to provide a technological uh, benefit. And, uh, I expect you to uh, provide some use cases, experiences, uh, from, uh, from the Ruby and Rails. Uh, some, some people uh, provide us about the, the, their use, uh, their great experience of the, the smooth uh, development for the, especially from the small to medium size the web application. So the, uh, those are the sweet spot of the Ruby on Rails and uh, the, our benefit is, you know, in, is is better than other language and technologies like like Python and JavaScript. Uh, from uh, performance wise, for the for my, from micro benchmarks, the V8 Java, uh, JavaScript is much much faster. But the V8 uh, not JS, which used V8, it does not run on the multi core, so it's basically single threaded. So the, that means that in some cases, if Especially after Ruby three, so the we are uh, we are better in the multi core environment, uh, and uh, that kind of that we uh, have those kind of benefits. So that we have to uh, you know the point out those kind of the the those kind of the, the strengths to to convince people to use Ruby. Yeah, thank you. Oui. Hi, Mike. Uh, we met last night, but yeah. I was uh, too nervous to ask you. Uh, so uh, here's a question. Um, um, if, you, if, you, if you were to implement, re-implement Ruby, uh, what, is there anything you've done differently? Uh, yeah. Any mistake you made or uh, yeah. you feel like uh, you could? Maybe introduce uh, static type checking uh, at the beginning, or or pattern matching, or whatever features. Yeah. Uh, actually, if I remember in Ruby, so the Ruby at at the beginning, so the uh, Ruby very early stage of the development, Ruby mimics uh, the Perl programming language, and uh, and uh, I regret. We I did too much, so the probably I drop uh, the those weird dollar something variables from the language, and uh, probably I will drop the uh, I will drop the say threads from the language. And uh, in addition, uh, I'm going to drop the some mutability of the object. For example, the time object is mutable. And uh, the, some other objects are mutable, so the, I, I drop those kinds of the mutability from the language. Yeah, but uh, basically Ruby is Ruby. <laughs> oh. Yes, next. Hi, Matt. Thank you for your great talk. So I have a question about the concurrency model in Ruby 3. So you mentioned in your talk that other languages like Go and Elixir, they all use single entities for their concur concurrency model, but the Ruby cannot use a single entity, and it has to use two. So why is that? Can you maybe elaborate on the legacy problems mm -hmm. for Ruby? Uh, basically, the 
Uh, basically, for the better concurrency, so the basically the, the, uh, the we cannot share the state between the concurrent entity like threads. So the uh, guilds does not share anything, basically, uh, unless the object is totally immutable. <coughs> so the immu immutable object can be shared, but the mutable objects can't. And that, uh, from the ground up, Ruby objects are basically immutable, so the object cannot be shared. Uh, the language like Elixir, so the basically every value or every object are immutable, so that uh, it's, it's okay to be shared between, uh, shared between the, the processes, the Elixir processes, but uh, Ruby cannot. So that, uh, in that sense, so the, so the, the guilds can be isolated without the sharing object. But uh, uh, prohibiting object sharing between the concurrent entity, it's kind of tough to program for Ruby programmers because you know, the concur uh, concurrency model is totally different. So that for ease of use, we have to provide the better, uh, I mean the easier, the simpler uh, concurrency model like uh, the auto fiber. So that this is kind of the compromise to the, the Ruby programmers. Did I answer correctly? And then for Go, Go ignores the, the, the state sharing. But, and uh, yeah, that's one, one possibility, but we, you know, we care about the, the safety of the, the Ruby programs. Wait,因为前面有一位问问题的观众呢,他手上其实已经有一本书了,所以我手上还有一本,所以我最后可以再让大家再问一个问题,但前提是你最好手上没有书,这样的话我们把最后一个问题,把最后一本书送出去,那好
worsen the, the memory bottleneck. That is th uh, the second thing. Uh, the last thing is that you know, the I.O. blocking is not easily uh, avoid, avoidable from the current uh, Rails model. So the, the, those three reasons, JIT compiler makes Ruby application slower. But uh, we, we are going to improve the, uh, the cost of the JIT compiler. So the JIT compiler requires less memory, and the JIT compiler runs even faster compared to the past. So the, the performance uh, drawback is uh, reducing, but uh, it still runs a little bit slower than the, the Rails application without JIT. Oui. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you, Matt Model. Thank you very much. Thank you.